Hey everyone, I'm Danny, and welcome to Muggle Magic. If you live in the United States, uh, Thanksgiving is right around the corner. And I kind of wanted to do a DIY having to do with food in some way, and I was thinking about like recipes and stuff, but that would be really difficult to do in here because I don't really have a kitchen in the studio. So um, I decided on doing a readable cookbook. And the way I did this was I found a old vintage cookbook. I think this one actually might have been from like 1919 or somewhere around there. Anyways, it doesn't matter. The point is, uh, it's in the public domain, so um, basically I can reproduce this without having to worry about copyright. And so I went in and redesigned some of the pages, like the title page, the cover of the book, and everything to make it look like it came from like Harry Potter, from the Wizarding World, but the recipes on the inside are all the same. And we're actually going to bind this by hand, and we're going to uh, create the cover, all, uh, all this uh, put together by hand. So it's not going to be like a very easy project, I mean, it will be kind of easy, but it's just going to be a little time consuming to put together. But I think the finished product is going to be well worth it. So go ahead and check out the description box below for a list of supplies you're going to need, as well as the free downloadable templates. And let's get started. First, you need to print the interior pages. And these are set up so that they should be in the right order. Um, so I've got them all in one PDF, but you need to separate them into um, six page packets. Let's go ahead and do that and we're going to start at the very back of the the very front of the book actually. So you were right now you're looking for there's a few empty pages and then you see the uh, title page here. So yeah you're just going to go ahead and grab six of those. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that is one packet. So we'll set that aside and we're just going to keep doing that. Just keep counting uh, up to six pages and putting them in their own little stacks. So the last packet is going to be five pages instead of six and that's okay. That's what you want. And now what we're going to do is staple the pages in the center, just two staples. So if you're using a long reach stapler, you want to set it at five and a half inches in and then you should be good to go. And then we'll fold the packet in half, so it should look like this now. And then we're just going to reinforce this fold down the center with a, a bone folding tool, or what I'm using right now is a clay, like, sculpting tool. But yeah, it can definitely be used for this as well. So now we're going to do that with all of our packets. And you kind of want to stagger the staples so that they're not in the exact same spot on each packet. That way, uh, when we stack these all up together, you won't have like a couple of really thick parts where this, all the staples are. So you should end up with seven packets, and if you put them in order, if you kept them in order, if you flip through them, all the pages should be in order as you go through all these packets. So the next thing we want to do is make sure that we get all the packets in order, and then we can bind them together. However, um, I completely forgot I meant to have two blank pages at the front of this book, and they are not there, so I messed up the templates, but it's okay. I have included this <laughs> um, just blank page uh, file, this blank page PDF, so if you print this out, you can fold it in half and pretend it's just an, uh, an extra packet to go at the very beginning of the book. So we'll just take that blank page and put it right on top, and that's how we're going to fix that issue. That's, I mean, I've already got this, these all printed, and it's much easier to do it this way than go back and change the templates. So now we're going to use these uh, paper clamps here to clamp all of these pages, all, I'm sorry, all of these packets together there. So now, as you can see, I've kind of tried to line them all up right here, and then I'm going to take a paper clamp and clamp them together just to make sure that they stay lined up. There we go. And now we can just go ahead and even them out everywhere else, straighten them out and clamp the other side. And we actually want the clamps to go in a few different places, right here at the top. And then we're going to actually move this clamp. Then we're gonna put this clamp 
right at the top. So there we go. Now we've got these clamped together at the top and the bottom. So you can take a pencil or a pen or whatever you want. This, it doesn't matter what you use because, as long as it's not gonna bleed through the paper, because this is going to be completely hidden when we're done. So we're gonna put a mark every half inch on all of the pages. kind of difficult to do upside down. So your uh, packet should now look like this and you should have lines down the spine. And now we can take these clamps off. So for this next part, we just need a thumbtack or something similar, uh, like a, a pin of some kind. And then for each packet, we're going to put little holes right down the spine like this for each place that we made a mark. And if this starts hurting your finger, you can use a thimble or something to protect your finger as you push the tack through these pages. Just make sure that the tack has gone all the way through on all of these holes. So now we just stack the packets back up again and we are going to start sewing and you can really use any needle and any thread. I'm just going to be using, you know, just a plain needle. I'm using red thread so you can see where the thread goes, but if you want, you could get a color that closer matches the pages. However, the, the threading should not be visible once we're done. So just go ahead and get yourself a nice long thread. And for anybody who doesn't know how to thread a needle, um, it's kind of difficult sometimes, but if you, honestly, if you lick the end of the thread, it kind of gets the thread to stick together and it goes through that uh, part of the knee on the end of the needle a lot more easily. We're going to just fold the thread basically in half. So take the two ends and line them up together. And then you should have, oh, I know this is really really hard to see. <laughs> um, here we go. I guess that's a little better, isn't it? So you should have the thread folded in half and then the needle dangling there at the end of the thread. And I know it sounds weird, but if you lick the entire thread from like where the needle is all the way to the ends now, once it's doubled up, they're going to stick together a lot more easily. And um, yeah, I, I mean, that's what I do and you should too. <laughs> And now we're going to do a loop knot right there at the end of the thread. And we'll do another one. Here we go. So we'll just loop it like that. And then put these two ends through the loop. And there we go. So we're going to try and double up these loop knots so that uh, the thread doesn't go past the holes in the paper try and triple up that knot actually. You want it to be a pretty big knot. All right, there we go. So now I have a pretty big knot there. You can't really see it that well in the camera, I don't think, but there is a very large knot right there. I actually tied four knots on top of each other to make it big enough that I don't think it's gonna go through the holes. And it doesn't matter really where you start as long as you go from the one end. So you could start at either one of these ends all right, so I put a piece of white paper down just so you can see the thread easy, uh, um, more easily because you couldn't really see the red on top of the green mat. Let's go ahead and stack this back up and then we're going to put paper clamps on the opposite ends of where we just poked our holes and that's going to make it easier for us to keep the stacks together. All right, there we go. Now we can start sewing and you're probably gonna to wanna to use a thimble or something to protect your finger while you do this. Um, <clears throat> and the idea is to just go through all the holes that we just poked. And we're gonna, yeah, just go ahead and go through all those with the uh, needle and thread. Here is number one, and we're going to go
go ahead and double it up on each one of these like sets of holes. So we're going to wrap it through twice. So there's once, and then we're going to go through again. Go. Pretty easy once we since we uh, pre-made those holes. And again, we'll go through a second time, a second round through here basically. The second time through is quite easier than the first, and at this point, I do need the thimble. And we're just going to repeat this process, obviously, until we've uh, sewn together the entire book. And once you get a few, a couple of these in here, two or three uh, down, you can take those paper clamps off because you're going to need to be able to sort of separate the packs in order to get the needle through the first time. And now that I've gone a few down, I, I will put a paper clamp here just to make sure that the pages don't loosen, don't loosen up and you know that they stay together. Crap, okay, my thread broke again. I am beginning to think that I got the wrong kind of thread to bind a book. Let's try this again. You also might find it useful to use needle nose pliers to grab and pull the uh, needle through. The key to this is to not pull it extremely tight. Get it tight enough to where you know it's firm, but don't pull it so tight that it breaks, obviously. Or just get stronger thread. Whoops, I broke my thread again. So if you break your thread or run out of thread, all you need to do is tie it off right where you uh, broke it or ran out. And again, we're gonna like do a big quadruple knot here just to make sure it doesn't uh, get loose. Okay, so now that uh, I've gone to the end, I'm gonna go through this end part three times instead of twice. And now we're going to reinforce this a little bit more with some hot glue. Now anywhere where you have like little pieces of thread that might be loose or where you've had to cut and, and uh, knot it and everything, you could go ahead and lay those across the spine. So we'll just glue them directly to the spine to kind of hold them in there. We're just gonna take our hot glue gun and glue all the way down the spine and try and get a little bit on like in between every packet. Now we're just gonna have to let that dry for just like a minute probably. And next we're going to need a piece of cloth. So any any piece of cloth will do. I am using uh, just a bit, bit of leftover from those hex bags that I made in the Supernatural video. Not too long ago. But yeah, this is just left over from that. So we're going to be gluing this strip along the spine right, right here. So to do that, I'm going to actually use a couple of clamps and clamp it to my table on uh, this end where you can't see actually. So there we go. Now the reason I clamped it to the table over here is so that I can kind of pull it tight like this so that it doesn't have wrinkles in it. And then I am just going to apply some more hot glue, probably right down the center here, and then stick the whole book right to it. So here we go. Now you kind of want to make sure that this is tight on the spine. This is going to help hold it together because the cloth is really strong. It's not gonna rip, obviously, so this is gonna really reinforce the spine of your book. Next, we are going to start putting our end paper on. So you wanna print the end paper templates. 
Um, you want two of them, and they can be single-sided because we're only going to see one side of the end paper. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of paper to protect the rest of my book as I do this, and I'm just going to take the very first page and put it on top of that. And then what the point is is to glue the end paper like this onto the other side of the first page of the book. And for that we'll use some rubber cement. Uh, this stuff doesn't smell good, but it really does a good job um, at making paper stick together without any wrinkles or anything. In fact, you know, we could have done this part before gluing the uh, the fabric to the spine, but here we go. All right, so we're just doing the first half of the end paper. We don't, we're not going to do the other part yet because that is going to help uh, bind this to the cover that we're going to make. Right. And now you can remove that protective sheet. And I like to take a cloth or something to wipe away any excess glue and also to smooth out the uh, smooth out the pages together. There we go. Well, that looks good. And now we're just going to go ahead and do that same exact thing to the other side. Okay, there we go. So we've got our end paper uh, glued in here. Just like this. So that's what it should look like uh, when you're flipping through. You should see the end paper to start and then the cover page and then yeah we just you could just keep going through the book. Next we need to trim the pages down and then we need to um, make the cover. And to trim the pages down you could either you know use a ruler and exacto knife and just go over it so many many times or you could just take it somewhere to get it cut. I actually have a cutter that'll cut through all of this at once because I didn't want to have to deal with it and I cut through large stacks of paper often enough that it was definitely worth it. Um, I will see if I can find a link to it, but I don't believe that it's being made anymore. I think it's like one of the last of its kind. So, um, but yeah, I, I will leave a link just in case you guys are interested. Okay, so here is the big guillotine cutter I was talking about. It's hard to get it all in the same shot, so I'm going to have two different angles so you can see what I'm doing here. But what I'm going to do is just slide it and actually let me do, I'll do the this end first. So we're just going to make sure that it's all lined up. And we are wanting to take off about a quarter of an inch from all the way every uh, side of the book. So now that we have it lined up, I'm just going to lower this part that's actually going to hold the paper and, and the book in place so it doesn't move around while I'm trying to cut. There we go. And then we have this long arm that you cannot see, like a big lever that is just making the blade go back and forth. So I'm just going to pull it down and it should cut right through pretty easily. Yep, there we go. There was like hardly any force in that at all. So we just cut this whole piece off right here. And I'll flip through just to make sure that they all got, uh, don't have any white left on them, and they don't. And it's a pretty, uh, pretty nice even cut. So we'll just do that to all sides and be done. Yep, and it looks like all the pages were cut properly. And now to make the cover, and there are two different ways you can do this. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to put gold foil on this and make it look nice and awesome. <laughs> but uh, you could, I do have a template if you don't if have the, a way to make the gold foiling work. I do have a template that just has the cover design and everything on it already. But if you're doing the gold foiling, here's how you do it. We're going to just print this part, and this is just the background texture for the cover. And this is going to be printed on an inkjet printer. And then we're going to feed that into a laser printer and print the design onto that, on top of it. 
So again, you want inkjet printer for the background texture and then a laser printer for the black um, actual design that we want to have, where we, basically where we want to have the gold foiling. And then we're going to need some of this. This is a roll of heat activated gold foil. And then I will be using this. And this is called a mink gold foiling machine. Uh, and it, the way it works is it heats up the toner on the, on the paper that we just printed and it makes the heat activated gold foil adhere to that toner. So there are a lot of tutorials I've found on how to do this, what I'm about to show you. And you can even use a laminator to do it if you want, but I couldn't find one locally that was wide enough. For this book cover, I needed to be able to feed it in 11 inches wide, but the laminators that I could find were just too small. And I wanted something that was actually built to do this just to make sure I get the best results. So I ended up getting this mink gold foiling machine. And a lot of people have, uh, like I said, posted tutorials on how to do this, but no one ever explains, at least in the ones that I've watched, no one's ever explained why it works. So I, I'm gonna tell you why it works. Because when you use the inkjet printer, this is a water-based ink, and so if you heat that up, nothing happens. It's just water-based ink. However, the laser printer uses a powder toner uh, it's called toner, and um, the way it works is it heats the, the toner up and then the toner sticks to the page. So uh, if you heat the toner up again after it's been, even after it's been stuck to the page, it will become sticky again and hot and obviously hot. And that's, uh, that's how the gold sticks to it because it heats up and activates the gold foil. So let's go ahead and do this. And we're going to need a couple of things. You need this transfer folder, which is just a plastic folder that you put the sheet of paper and the gold foil into in order to protect it as it goes through your gold foiling machine. We're also going to cut the cover down to size before we actually put it through the gold foil machine. And before we get started, we'll take, a, a, we'll turn the mink on first, obviously. We have to turn it on and then we're going to turn the heat up to about three or four. We'll go ahead and do four just to be safe. And we, we'll set that aside and wait for that to heat up. Now we need a piece of gold foil that's going to cover the front of this. And you want the gold side, see there are two sides. One side's kind of like a dull white pearl sort of color and the other is gold. Obviously you want the gold side facing up. And we'll just cut that off right there. All right, so now we need to get our transfer folder out. And we're going to put both of these in together. And the gold foil will start to like stick to the, tra uh, the transfer folder like with uh, static electricity. Just be aware of that as you do this. There we go. And now that this is in the transfer folder, I'm gonna just kind of wipe it with this cloth to make sure that I get most if not all of the bubbles out of here and then yeah the gold foiling machine just beeped so it's ready to go and this is actually just going to run straight through it it's i mean you don't have to like push anything to get to get it to start going through you just put it in and the wheels will automatically grab hold of it and pull it through and here it's coming out on the other side and it is done. So it doesn't take too long. It only took maybe a minute to go through there. Now I can just go ahead and turn off the gold foiling machine, set that aside and let it cool down. And now we can take a look at the results. So far it's been pretty good. Um, I have noticed that there are little tiny like spots of gold foil, like very small, tiny, tiny little like dots, like salt, grains of salt sized all over the print and I think that might be because I need to clean my printer or something because it might be like putting toner where there shouldn't be toner but as you can see it did its job it is it is now a gold foiled cover and it looks pretty good now we need something to actually stick this to so let's make the cover itself so go ahead and print the cover cut guide. So this, these are the three pieces we need. So the front, the back, and the spine for your book. 
before you actually do anything though, you might want to uh, sort of just take a look and see if it's going to fit your book properly. It should look something like this. If it does, it should look like it just sort of overlaps a little bit outside of, of the of the actual pages. So if, you, if yours looks like this, then you are good. If not, you can cut your book down a little bit more. So this is our cut guide, and we're going to be using this uh, poster board. It's, it's very thick poster board, um, a very thick cardboard. So I'm just going to, going to line it up with the edge over here and just fold it around the poster board so that this edge is right lined up with the very edge of the poster board. Next, we're gonna do the same thing with this line. We're gonna line that up with the top. And this is so that you don't have to make those two cuts as well, because it's already, you know, it's already cut for you pretty straight. <laughs> so now we can start cutting. And we're just gonna use a ruler and X-Acto knife to do this, because uh, you're gonna get really good results with that. There we go. So you just keep doing that until you're totally cut through. And to cut all the way through this, you're going to have to go over it multiple times. And now you should have these three pieces. So it's the two covers and the spine. And we're just going to use some book binding tape to stick these together. So just lay the book binding tape down on your table and then Place your spine in there, as centered as you can get it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're going to put these uh, front and back covers on here, but you want to leave just a tiny, tiny bit of space between them, just like the printed cover was. You can use that as reference to know how much space to leave between the uh, spine and the cover. Okay, so now we can fold these top and bottom uh, pieces in like this. And now it's time to line it up with our gold foiled cover and uh, stick it on. So it's actually not easy. I can't really show you this very well in the camera, but if you hold it up to the light, you can kind of see through it and it helps, uh, you know, it helps uh, get this on properly. A good way to do this is to get the spine lined up first, because as long as you get the spine lined up, the rest of it should fit properly. So I think it's it's centered um, vertically now to center it horizontally here. This is definitely one of the most difficult parts is to get this to line up. But once you think you have it lined up where you want it, go ahead and clamp that side down so you don't lose that. Make sure you keep it pretty tight, r tightly wrapped around here as, as you work. Put another clamp right there. There we go. So is it perfect? Mm, no, but it's gonna look good enough, I think. Okay, so then we'll go up into each corner and we're gonna cut straight down toward the corner just with a pair of scissors like this and then diagonally this way. So your corner should look like that. Just go ahead and do that for all four corners. So go ahead and just wrap your paper around like this. And then we're just going to make a couple of small cuts here. So it looks just like that. And now go ahead and just clamp one side of the cover template around here like that. And we will need another piece of scrap paper because we're going to be doing some gluing now. So get your rubber cement out again, and we're going to just start gluing the cover onto our template, or gluing the template onto our cover, I should say. So now you can start putting the, your template onto your cover like this. I'm just going to use this rag again to smooth things out as I go. You can add some more glue here, fold this part up and over like this. 
And again, feel free to just use your rag to smooth that out, get any bubbles out from underneath that might be there. And just uh, keep going until you've got this glued on completely. And then this side can go down on top of the top and bottom sides we just uh, folded over. And now we can do the top and bottom part for the spine. There we go. So now we can safely take these clamps off and start gluing this part onto the template as well. And now you should have your hard cover pretty much done, ready to go. You might want to wait a little while for the glue to dry, but you know, you probably should, but ain't nobody got time for that. So I've got to just keep going. Now it's time to actually put the book that you made and that you bound into this hard cover that, that we've just made. So we're going to do this with hot glue and we're going to start with just the spine. So let's go ahead and put a generous amount of hot glue, not like too much, but a good amount of hot glue right down the spine of our book. Make sure that you, you line this up as uh, centered as you possibly can. Because once we do this, you cannot undo it. Now we're going to use some more rubber cement to glue this uh, strip of cloth that we put on here on, onto the hard cover here to help hold this on. Before we do that, let's go ahead and trim it just a little bit on the top and bottom like this. Just like that. That way we can, we, like it'll be hidden once we uh, glue the end paper over this because we're going to glue the end paper over it as well, like this. So again, we'll get out our Elmer's glue, or our rubber cement. And there we go, and we can glue that down. I can even put some more glue over the top of it just to make sure this gets glued down well. This part is pretty important as it's what's going to pretty much hold this book together, hold the cover onto uh, the uh, book anyways. Once you're done with that, you should probably wait for this to dry, but we're gonna glue the end paper down right away just because I'm impatient and I wanna get this done. But you, you should do it properly. Okay, now you should be able to just fold this end paper open. We can use the uh, bone knife to get it kind of in the crease there, like that. And then we can use our rag to smooth this out and make sure it's all fully stuck onto the book. That should do it for the end paper on this side. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So I like the way this is turning out so far, but the pages are still a little too clean around the edges. So I'm gonna use some Distress Ink to make this look old and aged. And basically, I'm just kind of stamping this really lightly across the uh, borders of the pages to make them look kind of maybe moldy or just dirty. And I think that gives it a really nice touch if you're trying to make this look like an old book. It looks pretty good. Now, I'm also going to go around the cover and the edges basically everywhere I can to make this just look dirty. Now this would be a good opportunity to talk about usage rights on this. So yes, the original book and content are in the public domain. So um, it, that means there's no copyright on the content itself. So if you would like to get the original book and it's called the Something Different Dish, the copyright is 1915, you can do that and you can modify it yourself. But this version I modified is now, it, it, the modifications that I made, such as the cover design, uh, the interior changes, the stains on the pages, and all of that stuff is my own artwork. So although the content isn't copywritten, my artwork is, so you cannot sell this book, okay? Now I've also decided to go ahead and put in 
a signature for the author. And by the way, I changed the title of this book to The Bubbling Cauldron. So that's another mod modification that I made. And I changed the author to Barnabas Gordon. I'm just going to go ahead and put his signature right here on the inside of the pages just to make it look a little more authentic and cool. Anyways, that's it. This is how you bind your own wizarding cookbook. If you want a chance at winning the cookbook that I made in this video today, there is a giveaway link in the description box below. There's also a giveaway link down there for the 55k giveaway, which is for uh, Fred and George Weasley Pop figures, uh, Weasley's Wizard Weasley's catalog, as well as a professionally printed Weasley's haunted deck of cards. So if you're interested in any of that, that's all in the description box below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Remember, I get a lot of ideas for these DIYs that I do from your comments. So if you have an idea for something that you want to see me do in the future, definitely leave a comment below and let me know. If you're interested in seeing more DIY videos having to do with Harry Potter and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.